Good morning. First of all, I want to thank you all for uh, supporting me on this channel. Uh, I've seen kind of, you know, surprising growth of this channel ever since I reactivated it two or three months ago. Uh, I'm about to touch 8,000 subscribers and uh, the way I see that I'm getting at least 1,000 subscribers per month. So the more videos I'll be po posting here, the more it will grow. So once again, thanks to everybody who watches my videos, who appreciates it, likes it with their friends and, um, and subscribe to my channel. So thank you all for that. Uh, I, I go through all the comments that I get uh, on my videos and most of those times the comments are engaging. Uh, they are appreciative of the efforts that I'm putting in. I'm kind of ignoring all the negative comments because there is not much uh, to talk about. Uh, the comments which are not very constructive, but 90% uh, comments are kind of engaging and very constructive. And I really appreciate and thank you all for kind of building a community there. And when I go through those comments, they also give me idea what kind of stories I should be doing next time. So one comment that I saw on the Fedora 27 opinion piece was that uh, should they use Fedora 27 or should they use CentOS? And I think that's a very good question. Which one should you choose? The interesting thing with, the, with, with these two distributions is that they have different focus areas. While Fedora is upstream for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, it sees all the innovations uh, from the Linux world, from the GNOME world, and from the Red Hat world as well. That builds the foundation for the next release of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, or RHEL as you call it, which also makes Fedora a cutting edge distribution because you get to see all those latest technologies in there, which has two, uh, the way you can look at it is it a drawback or advantage. The advantage is that you get access, you get early access to all these latest packages and libraries and software that you know different communities are working on, which means you're always on the cutting edge. And that is something I personally like. That's why I use um, rolling uh, rolling releases of Linux distributions. I use Tumbleweed and I also use Artonix. So that's my favorite. The disadvantage of that is that um, things can break, uh, especially if you are looking at a very stable workflow. At the same time, you, you have to kind of, you know, keep yourself updated with what is changing because it may break your older workflow. The new things will come on. On the CentOS side, CentOS is a kind of uh, drop-in clone of RHEL. It's, uh, it was created uh, by the community so that the people who do not want to or who cannot afford or who cannot pay a subscription fee to Red Hat should be able to use RHEL without any support. So uh, CentOS is a clone of Red Hat. It's uh, Enterprise Linux. It's a binary replacement where you can run on your servers. So for example, if you're running like 1000 virtual machines on your data center you don't have to pay that subscription fee to red hat if you are you know kind of a smaller company or a research organization or whatever it is i don't want to get into detail who would use centos but that's the whole point uh, it's red hat enterprise linux minus any support from red hat and as a result it is extremely stable because it's meant to run on data centers but on the flip side, uh, they only offer those libraries and packages and software which has been tested extensively. And by tested, I, I mean every software, once the final release is out, it's always tested. But um, since it's new release, it may break some workflow. It may make break something else. So uh, when I say, you know, it's well tested, it means it's tested by the user's community and the people who are actually deploying it in production so before they move uh, the, 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 their production workload to those latest libraries they go through extensive testing in their own workload not what the developer tested to work with the distribution itself so it is uh, by, by it I mean CentOS is very conservative when it comes to packages and libraries so you will get 
packages and, and uh, software which are one or two versions older than the latest stable version. So that is one big difference between these two distributions. So if you are somebody who wants access to latest and greatest packages, Fedora is the way to go. If you are somebody who just wants a very stable you know, operating system, you don't really care about what is new in GIMP or LibreOffice, you have you know, one stable workflow, you just work on text, text file, you just do basic you know, audio video uh, you know, processing, you browse the web, then maybe CentOS is the right distribution for you. That's one point. Second point is support. Um, since CentOS is meant for uh, servers and data centers, I really don't know what kind of hardware support is there when it comes to consumer hardware. What I mean here is like, for example, I have this Dell XPS 13 laptop. I have this Dell XPS um, all-in-one system, which is officially supported by Dell. Uh, because they offer rel on this hardware so you can expect that full hardware support for CentOS also because they are as I said you know a clone and binary replacement so it should work but if you're buying some random laptop from the market from HPE or uh, I mean I don't want to name any company but I'm just you know Lenovo HPE or whatever it is it may or may not work if, if you build your own custom hardware and you get some you know crazy wireless chips or so, webcam I don't know whether it will work or not because that is not the target audience of CentOS and you cannot expect their developers to solve those problems for you because that was never their target and they may not have access to hardware that you are running to test and help you with that. Uh, and uh, the second thing is that um, with Fedora, it is meant for developers who run it on their local machines because Fedora is mostly for uh, people like Linux Torvalds, you know, who who wants access to latest libraries and packages. So when they are building their own software, they know what is coming next. Uh, as a result, you know, it does have a support for a wider audience because it's dog fooding. The same developers also need access to latest hardware because they want their software to be running on latest hardware. So Fedora has better chances of running on latest hardware and supporting latest hardware than CentOS. That's the second point. The third point is software support. And once again, it goes back to the point, who is the target audience? With, um, with, uh, with CentOS, since the target audience is data center and servers, they don't really target or focus on desktop applications yes you can run everything is you know rpm based and most of the major open source applications from libreoffice or game or whatnot they are supported on centos they are available on centos but you cannot say uh, uh, the same things you cannot expect the same level of support for some third party niche application i mean for example handbrake you know I have no idea because I don't use CentOS on my local machine. I do run CentOS on my main server, which runs on Linode, but I don't run CentOS on my home server. Only time I tried CentOS was when I was trying to run on my home server and I needed Plex and Plex worked. But don't forget, Plex is meant to run on a home server kind of environment. So all those applications that target server like workload, that will be fully supported on CentOS. I mean, CentOS is the best operating system out there for those kind of workloads. But when you look at the consumer side of it, it may not be available. So I don't really know if Darktable or you know all those tiny whiny applications that I use are available on CentOS or not on Fedora Yes, they are available a majority of them are available uh, So all you can do is you can install the RPM fusion repository and then you have access to all those um, Applications and from what I have noticed it that as soon as the Fedora uh, Distribution goes into beta uh, the, I mean the next release goes into beta you can already install um, um, RPM Fusion repository on the system and start using it. 
So from software point of view, this is the big difference. So if you're looking for, uh, if you want to be able to use any application that is out there available for Linux platform, Fedora has better chances than CentOS. Now the next point, and that's also an important point, is uh, lifecycle support. Fedora is supported roughly for uh, one month more after the next release is out and there is a release of Fedora every 12 months I guess so or maybe six months I'm sorry about that but okay and the next thing is support and that is really crucial and important depending on your workload every release of Fedora is supported for 13 months so once the next release is out the older releases will get one more month of support after that they won't support it so you have to upgrade it which means that uh, you have to do this every 13 month does it matter depends on what kind of workload you have if you have a very kind of uh, complex or custom setup like if you're doing a lot of film editing or whatever you know uh, i don't want to specify I'm a, I'm a filmmaker so i focus on that and you have you know kind of created your custom workload you know you have installed application you have configured them and uh, doing that every 13 months is not worth the time and effort then fedora is not the right distribution that's where centos comes into play because centos is supported for 10 years Yes, you heard me right. It's supported for a decade. So if you have that kind of workflow, CentOS makes more sense than Fedora. But if you don't mind and you want access to all those things that I told you about, latest packages, um, better support for hardware, um, better support for a wider range of software, then Fedora is the right bet. Now, the last point is the actual focus of both distributions. You can use uh, uh, any any tool for any purpose. I, I cook a lot, you know, but I won't use a pizza pan to make chicken curry at the same time. I won't use a curry pot to make uh, bread. So I, I tend to use the right tool for the right job. So you should always look at, you know, what is the focus of the distribution of the tool that you're going to use in your use case so that you can expect uh, so that you can have right expectations from the community, from the developers, or you know, when you ask for support, you do know that you will get support because they do target that audience. So for CentOS, that as I said, the target audience is you know, a server workloads, data center. A lot of people do use it on the desktop, just the way you know, a lot of people use you know, Red Hat Enterprise desktop. So a lot of people do use it, but it's still uh, in those you know, enterprise use cases, not for you know, very extreme uh, consumer great use cases where you want to play games and do all those crazy things fedora on the other hand is meant uh for desktop user it's, it's i mean they do have a server version and they do have a containerized version but once again that is as an upstream project for those product of red hat so if you want to run on server and you're testing want to test what's going on then okay yes fedora server is right if you want to see what's going in the container world then yes atomic host is the right thing but for desktop fedora workstation is the right tool uh, or the right operating system for the people who want access to latest you know applications uh, they want to know what's going on in the linux world and uh, they are ready to upgrade and they're also willing to fix if things break so these are the two focus, different focus areas so i would suggest that if you are debating between fedora and centos please you know look at these points and then gauge which one is the right distribution for you there is no best distribution the best distribution is the one that works for you so please make the right choice and once again i want to thank you all for supporting this channel please like it share it and subscribe to it we'll see you next time bye for now